Hey there everyone, welcome to this weekend's video. I'm excited to share with you today a foundation routine um, multi-step system based around the Makeup Forever HD slash Ultra HD range. Now recently Makeup Forever has revamped, relaunched um, a number of products in their base collection to, you know, be fit with 4K video, 4K video recording equipment. You want your skin to look that much ultra flawless. Um, I recently attended a workshop with Makeup Forever where the makeup artists from the team taught us, you know, about how to use the products, but moreover helped us assess our own skin conditions. And I think what makes the whole range so unique is that there's a lot of products yes but this also means you can mix and match to get exactly uh, what suits your current skin condition or what type of coverage or finish that you want and there's a lot of flexibility in the range of products here i have a lot of items here and i'm going to put on quite a number of products on my face but really that's just because I used it at the workshop. I thought it was super interesting. I learned a lot of tips and tricks, which I hope to pass on to you as much as I can remember. But as well, I just want you to be able to see how everything looks on the face. So instead of reviewing them individually, and some of them I have used for longer than others, I thought we'd put this video together and just talk about all of that today as I am applying the products. So grab yourself a snack, grab a drink, and let's get started. To begin, I'm going to put on the new Makeup Forever Ultra HD Skin Booster, which comes in a small dropper format. Now this was something that they had a similar version of way back in the day when they first launched the HD range. That was a long time ago. Um, but now this is really the, I guess, supercharged version of that. And it's really just meant to give a lot of instant um, hydration to your skin because foundation always looks better and sits better on hydrated smooth skin. I do have moisturizer on but I do notice um, around the eye area and certain areas on my face especially if, if I'm a little flaky I can get um, patchiness whenever I apply foundation so I just lightly put a layer all over my skin. You can mix this with foundation. Um, some of us did that at the workshop depending on what we liked. It of course helps to thin out the foundation but also gives it a little extra kick and of course, the main ingredient in here is, you know, supercharged hyaluronic acid, which I've talked about loads and loads here um, in terms of skincare and what I use. So I love that ingredient. Makeup Forever has the skin equalizers and there's a ton of different shades available. I have two and I'll explain why in a moment. I have the base uh, the nourishing primer which is in the white i believe this could be an online exclusive i'll check and link everything down below in the info bar for you if not from sephora then from the makeup forever website directly i also have the radiant primer which is the pink one now they also make a blue one a purple one a yellow one and a green one for color correcting and the makeup artist was saying that a lot of times you know if you were looking for that really really natural look some of the makeup artists just directly use the primer primers to color correct instead of actually even having to use foundation so i thought that was pretty cool i'm just putting on a bit of the um, radiance pink primer especially in the center zone of my face if you watch a lot of um, Korean um, makeup tutorials they call this like the star zone where you want to be super bright and lit up I thought that was kind of a, an interesting reference so essentially the forehead around here a little bit down the center of my nose and on my chin and I'm leaving everything else more or less bare so why did I use the pink one versus, you know, the purple and whatnot? At the workshop, um, I finally had the confirmation that my skin tone is a neutral skin tone. I've been saying this for ages, you know, a lot of the warm tone yellow base foundations seems um, too rich in the yellow pigments and I needed something that was a light kind of pale yellow um, and not a super saturated MAC foundation type of yellow if you know what I mean but I wasn't really pink either and a lot of people do that vein test you know if your veins are green or if your veins are blue or purple 
I actually have both. And um, the makeup artist confirmed that I have a neutral skin tone. So the Makeup Forever Ultra HD foundation, I do have the liquid here as well as the stick foundation, but I'll use them separately in a moment. They are categorized into warm tones and cool tones, the yellows, and I think it's yellow and pink is how they've divided it. So they don't have a neutral. So what you can do if you're in kind of my situation is of course get to mix them together or you can use a primer that is a bit more cool toned and then put on a foundation that is slightly more warm toned and that does kind of cancel things out. So of course you're trying to match foundation to your neck right here and this is a little warm for my neck. This is the shade in Y225 and in the old formulation it would have been um, 117 which was a great match for my skin um, but it is ever so slightly yellow compared to my neck so I'm going to put this on the ultra HD invisible cover foundation and I'm actually going to put it on the what is this called uh, <laughs> this is my mixing palette pull the blank right there so shake this up real good and then a little bit on the mixing palette now at the workshop I did mix this with the ultra skin booster elixir but I think right now I'm going to mix in the nourishing primer just a little bit this ultra HD foundation to make it more invisible on the skin is not quite as high coverage as the original HD foundation so if that's what you were looking for that's not what you're going to get but um, you do now have the option of the Ultra HD Foundation Stick, which is great coverage if you want to do that. But I'm going to use that as a concealer and use the liquid foundation as my main foundation. So now we're ready to put some on the face. Um, at the workshop, of course, they gave us um, Makeup Forever brushes to use, but I don't have those right now so i'm going to use this elf brush which is the elf contouring brush it's a flat brush like so and i've been really liking it for blending liquid products especially foundation one of the tricks that they taught us is not to swipe your foundation but to kind of do a dab and pat and this is this works better with the brush that they had i'll try to look up exactly what brush we use at the workshop but do more of a push and pat motion to get a bit more coverage versus uh, swiping. Although granted, I do swipe around the edges to blend just so it's a bit more fluid. And what you really are looking to do is just even out skin tone a little bit. You're not looking for concealing type of coverage because you can go in with a concealer to do all of that. So. I'm just making sure all the areas are well blended. I don't have any patchiness or patchy spots. And we'll go in with the Ultra HD Foundation Stick. One thing I'm just going to pop on right now is the Ultra HD Lip Booster. This is a Hydra Plump Lip Serum. And again, with all of the Ultra HD products, especially the primers, the point is to give instant boosting results. Now. I've always talked about that I have very wrinkly lips. Not necessarily that my lips are dry, but they just have a lot of fine lines in them naturally. And it's hard for certain lipsticks um, to sit smoothly or glosses to sit smoothly over my lips. This comes in a sheer or clear version, which I'm using right now, as well as a tinted version. I opted for this one in my um, PR bag, but I've used it a couple times and I do quite like it. The results are more or less instant. It really does help to smooth out um, the lip wrinkles if you have wrinkly lips like I do. It doesn't pick up on dry flakes. I don't find that it necessarily makes my lips any bigger or plumper, but it does help to smooth them out. So it's similar to the other product I talked about, which I like um, from Estee Lauder, the dual ended one. That one is good too. This one might be a little bit cheaper um, in terms of general pricing. So foundation is on and we're ready to set 
makeup. At the workshop, they really stress the difference between setting the makeup and finishing the makeup. You might be familiar, and you probably are familiar, with the Makeup Forever um, Micro Finishing Loose Powder. It comes in a new formulation now, kind of the ultra version, the renewed version for 4K video, as well as a new um, packaging as well as formulation for the pressed version so the loose version as well as the pressed version for makeup forever the pressed version now also comes in a couple of more shades there's a peach shade and i think a yellow shade or was it a yellow shade and a deeper shade either way there are three colors now in the pressed version and still only just one translucent color um, the clear in the loose Okay, but for setting my foundation, because I don't have um, a Makeup Forever setting product, I am going to use the Laura Mercier um, loose, what is it called? Loose setting powder with a large powder puff, the one I got from my Sephora haul. You may be wondering what's the difference between a setting um, as well as a finishing. So a setting, we were told, was really for locking the makeup in place while a finishing is almost like a like a top coat whether you want a matte top coat or a glossy top coat a radiant top coat for your skin so while you could just directly use a finishing powder um, after your foundation it is recommended that you use a setting powder before the finishing so they're kind of two different things and i didn't know that until the workshop i'll link a sephora video where um, David, the Sephora Pro makeup artist, talked about differences between setting and finishing. I thought that was super educational, but essentially that's the difference between the two types of product, and you may not know this, as I didn't either. All right, made a little boo-boo. I set before I put on the concealer. I actually don't think I need a lot of concealing on my face, but I did want to go in with some concealing around the under eyes. Um, although I didn't put too much powder around here, I focused mostly on other areas of my face, so I think we might be fine. Um, backtrack though, if you are doing this yourself, do the concealing and the foundation and then the setting powder. I went, I got too excited and I went ahead of myself, but let's go back to concealing around the under eyes. They, at the workshop, recommended, of course, the corresponding concealer in the Makeup Forever range, but I actually really liked using the foundation stick as a concealer. I thought that was plenty of coverage for me, and um, I liked the consistency of the product. I have the foundation stick in the same shade, Y225, or the equivalent of um, 117 in the old color range, and I'm just taking a little bit on my finger. It's super emollient and patting it around the dark areas. So again, if you're doing this at home, um, remember to do this before you set the makeup, but I didn't put too much powder around the eye area. I stopped myself when I realized, so I think we might be okay. I have tried using the foundation stick as foundation, and on its own, I found it just to be a bit too much coverage for my personal liking. So whenever I do use that, I mix it together with the booster or with the primer. But really, all I did was a tiny bit on my finger and around the dark areas. And I'm going to go back and reset the under eye with the Laura Mercier. Now we're ready for actually finishing the makeup and of course the Makeup Forever Ultra HD super popular finishing powder gives a soft focus effect on the skin. I'm using the pressed version with a Tweezerman blush brush. And one tip that they gave us at the event was something that I'm pretty sure I've mentioned before in my own videos which is to roll powder over the skin especially if you find you pick up a lot of flakes when you swipe if you have dry skin rolling it prevents you from disturbing the makeup and just applies the product more delicately to the skin the very final step that i do um, even if i'm not wearing any of the ultra hd products i adore the Makeup Forever Mist and Fix uh, Makeup Setting Spray. I find it better than the other ones on the market. Um, I just do kind of one or two spritz. The first one is a little too close. Um, and I find that it 
moisturizes a little bit but also does help to lock in my makeup so my makeup should be good for a very long time today um, again if you want a review on any of the products I've mentioned in this video today drop me a comment and I'll get back to you with a proper review but I thought this was just a great way to do an overview of all of the new ultra HD and HD products from the range let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this video vote with a thumbs up and of course uh, talk to me if you've used the HD the original or the ultra HD or any of these and if you enjoyed them as well again leave requests for any future videos in the comment section and I will talk to you very soon take care Bye for now.